Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Rime of the Frostmaiden. Uh, what session is this? Six? Episode six? Uh, I think. Is it six already? I think it's six. It's, it's a number. Oh. Uh, apologies for the delay and uh, kind of randomness in getting the videos up. If you are watching. Oh, I know. I know, but uh, things have gotten pretty busy in my life, and although we're still playing every week, I just don't always have time to get to the video and the editing and all that stuff, so thanks for sticking with me, and as you can see, everyone has already rolled their d20s to give the recap, so Piggy, if you would be so kind. Well, Black Jack and Port got blown up. The end. <laughs> did I get an inspiration now? <laughs> no. No, you did not inspire me. Yeah, I, I didn't really feel inspired by that at all. <laughs> uh, oh, it's so good, though. To start you off, you were in Kerr Koenig looking for the Invisible Thieves. Ooh. Correct. Yeah, that led us to a spooky abandoned house. No, you but did the, why is the this fortress place first. Abandoned? With the ogre zombie. Well, you see, we were going to keep it as a pet, but we just had to leave it there. <laughs> Piggy could have, uh, she gave one of her, uh, fried Oreo bits to it, and yeah. it was really happy. Yep. I could tame it. I, I'm a ogre zombie whisperer. <laughs> Wait a minute. I want to be in that trade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. And then afterwards, we went to the spooky house, and they got blown up, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, key takeaway from the fortress with uh, outside of Karakonig was that it was one of the sons of Zardarak, Sunblight, was in there. Also some weird uh, spore people, but you, you kept them sleeping. But it was on the way back that you got lost. The trail had been blown over by ice and snow. Yep. And what you had thought was the trail actually just led you to outside of a forest to a spoopy abandoned cabin. We got a magical item. It went flash and then uh, did some spring cleaning to our party. <laughs> it, 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 Probably it, it, one, of, <laughs> one of my least favorite uh, spooky houses ever. And then when Piggy and the real magpie saw what happened, we hightailed it out of there and we're going to get revenge on that gnome. Or, yeah, it was a gnome, right? Yep. Well, the rumor that you had heard was that a gnome in Bryn Chander was paying top dollar for somebody to go to this cabin and get the experiments. Yeah. We got, yeah, now we're revenging now. Mm hmm. But, John Wicking. A, <coughs> a few miles into your journey towards Bryn Chander, you do have the sled and your mountain guide, so you're making pretty good time. But still, you, yep. the last thing you saw was a giant beam of light shooting upwards towards the sky. Yeah, we're hightailing it away from that giant beam of light. It's got radiation poisoning. We don't want to get that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm staying away from that. And that was a good enough recap to earn an inspiration. Oh, just barely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your patronage. You know? Yep. I kid. I still I kid. have inspiration from last time, so I can give it to the real magpie. The real magpie. That's very kind of you. I know, I'm generous. Good person, good alignment. Piggy's, uh, yeah, she's like lawful good, totally. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Bop. Well, guys, before we get started, um, I actually, I, I just got this and I read ahead, Ooh. so I can tell you exactly what happens. Next. <laughs> <laughs> you better not have. Oh, yeah, do share. Oh, I, haven't, I haven't even opened Story it. Time. It came in today. Oh, nice. Well, don't open it. I'm not. Promise. So, we'll start with the beam of light. It is actually parting the clouds, and while the rest of the dale is covered in darkness and twilight, a five mile radius around the cabin opens up to reveal pure sunlight. And Macritus, the ghost, will jump and cheer. It, it works! It works! Do you know what this means? 
Do you know what this is? Do you know what you've made? You, you, you created a miniature sun, sir. A me- no more rhyme. A mithalar. That's what I said. A miniature sun. Yes, yes, but more than just a miniature sun. This is- A miniature is, daughter? This itself ah. is a replica of an actual mithalar. Rumors and legends tell of the, the Netherese mages from long ago with great floating cities in the sky used giant orbs of power to make their cities float and great staves and wands of great power and I've made one, a small one, but we've done it. It works. They're not just legends. Okay, okay but here's the issue. We're, We're all dead. dead. So, so no, no one's, one's ever going to know that we've done this. And by we, we mean we. So, so I mean, congratulations, congratulations to us. We figured out your issue, but uh, <laughs> kind of a bigger issue at hand, if you couldn't see. That being that we're dead. Yeah, yeah the dead, dead thing. thing. That's, That's it. And the Mithalar stops. It's spinning and it's glowing. Though the sunlight still remains, the beam of light that's shooting out is now gone. There's just a five-mile radius part in the clouds where it's clear blue skies and sun rays shining down on the black cabin. As it stops and drops to the floor, Macritus pops out of existence. Yes. And you are returned to your forms. Your mortal forms. Forms. Oh, alive, Grash. So you mean so, I don't have to reroll a character? Great. Okay. I thought you were just toying with my emotions. <laughs> Play with my emotions. Pills here. Grabbing pills. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna start like touching, touching my body to make sure it's all there. there. I'm gonna start touching his body too. <laughs> That's really, really weird, weird but I wouldn't <laughs> expect anything <laughs> less from a bard. <laughs> It is uh, cold and uh, kind of slick, but it is solid. Is it the slick? Like, like I came out of the Matrix, Matrix pod? pod? You remember, remember how gooey, gooey he was? was? Oh, oh that shit was, shit was gross. That's my favorite part of the whole, the whole trilogy. I'm sure it was. You got P slimed. Piggy, Magpie, and Kristoff, you're on just the outer edge of this effect. So you, you feel you feel flittering warmth from the sunlight, but uh, at the speed you're going, the, and there's not much wind, but there is still cold wind. Uh, it's not as warm as the folks here in the cab cabin. Though by being inside the radius, you all gain the blessing of the Morning Lord, the same blessing that returned for and Blackjack to life. Yay! Ooh. Oh, they're gonna still run away. Wait, so what's the best? Each day at dawn, Lathander grants you his boon, and one non magical weapon in your possession becomes a plus one weapon whenever you wield it. Yay! Oh. What is that called again? Lathander's boon? Uh, Blessing of Weapon Enhancement. Well, you can call it Lathander's boon. Of Lathander. <laughs> so do we get that, or do they? You do. We all get that. Ooh. I, my only weapon is uh, magical weapons. Fort. Right? Flaming is magic. That's me. Fort, yeah. I use produce flame. Mm-hmm. Produce, magical produce flame. I'm about to produce pigs. <laughs> oh, God. Fort, you and Blackjack find yourselves alone in the cabin. Where did Macritus go? Yeah, what happened to him, and what happened to the Mithalar? He died for real. Where, where did our He's friend really dead. go? Okay. Is the Mithalar still on the table? It is. Okay. I'm not touching it. I'm going to use Mage Hand. <laughs> I'm going to clear everything out of my belt pouch and put specifically and only the Mithalar in there. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, this what? one. Hold it. 
That's what it looks like. Right, except it has three rings now, bitch. It does have three rings. <laughs> we solved the problem. Three is better than two. A ghostly blue hand. Hello! Everything okay? Jimmy Jam J Rock. How's baby Austin? Hey. Uh, good. Good. Nothing of concern? Uh, they want us to bring them in tomorrow, uh, and the stool sample just to double check everything, uh, but, um, they're not, you know, too worried right now. They said it could be yeah. nothing or it could be, uh, you know, something very minor. So that, that happened to Morgan once very early okay. on. Yeah. But well, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Welcome in. Guess, Guess who's not dead anymore. We're not dead. So to catch you up. To catch you up on what's going on, you are currently uh, on a sled with the real magpie, Piggy, and Jarthra, heading down the tundra. Uh, I, I guess, actually, I never asked you guys if you wanted to head down the, the uh, tundra or if you wanted to go back onto the trail. Um, so you you were here. Uh, to the northwest, that's a river, but it's uh, mostly frozen over. To get back on the trail, you would need to go down towards Tourmaline, or you can cut through the woods. Considering the last time we uh, took the off-beaten path, we ended up in a spooky place that uh, dissolved one of our, or two of our party members. Oh, just one. We're gonna, yeah, we should stick to the path, get to Brent ASAP. Yep. Give me one moment. One misses so late. Is that a minute? I can't count that high. It's really fucked that last session when, like, uh, good meat exploded, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, well. Not yet. Not yet. Because of <clears throat> Poncho's terrible, uh, Leadership. nuclear disarmament bill. <laughs> yeah, I, I doubt that happened. <laughs> yeah, well, you did. When fortune. You gave up all your nukes, hoping the other ten towns would do the same, and they just laughed at you and then took your nukes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then they nuked you. They, they were, were all Gandhi in Civ 5. <laughs> so, uh, you're taking uh, the safest, most direct way towards the trail? Yep, yep. Very good. Uh, sled wouldn't fare too well in the thick woods. So... See how far? Eight miles. Four, two. Yeah, it'd take you about two hours to get to Tourmaline. Uh, in which case, you can uh, pass right through the the city and make your way towards the Ten Trail to get to Brinchander. Um, Christoph. To catch you up on mm -hmm. what we were doing while you were gone. Piggy gave us a good recap. Excellent recap. The the best recap. Yep. One of the best <laughs> I've ever heard. Totally. No, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. never, mind, never mind, never mind. I, I heard a ridiculous recap. It was like, I think uh, Magpie, you gave one of the best ones I had ever heard on session two. Where you practically, practically just recapped word for word everything that happened. I was very impressed. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Piggy gave a great recap of what happened last session, and Fort and Blackjack were restored to life. Uh, the, there was a giant beam of light that shot out from the black cabin, where you guys mm -hmm. were, and that parted the clouds in a five-mile radius, your caravan catching the very tail end of that. And you all, once per day, I mean, I guess it's pretty much permanent, but... You all gained the blessing of Lithander, and uh, one non-magical weapon in your possession becomes a plus one weapon when you wield it. Okay. Um, other than that, like I said, there's a five mile radius where the rest of the dale is blanketed in black or darkness and twilight. Uh, this five mile radius is just a clear blue sky with sun rays shining down on the cabin. Jarthra, the real magpie, and Piggy are continuing on towards Tourmaline to get back to Brinshander to kill the gnome that told them to go to the cabin. 
But really, it wasn't the gnome that told told you guys. It was a rumor you that you had heard. So, those of you on the sled, uh, actually, yeah. actually, um, uh, b -b 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 Fort and Blackjack. Hello. Yes. yes. Not, Not on, on the sled. sled. Correct. Like I was, uh, or like we, like we had started. Your friends are gone. Yeah, I noticed uh, and that. And you find yourself alone, with the lights dimmed. Ringing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, you do see that the sled is gone, and you do, you can see uh, in the general d d direction that they were headed, it was south. But after a few yards, maybe 100 yards or so, the trail is gone. It's blown over. Well, I so, guess... Go ahead. No, you go ahead, it's better. Uh, I was just going to say I grabbed the amulet of health off the table as well. I can physically grab that. <laughs> so, homeboy's gone. Friends are gone. We're alive. Well, hold on, though. We need, we need to, to find, find the trail. trail. Yes. Yeah. So we okay. can see it. So, coming, coming down, down and looking the for the trail. Uh, let me pull <laughs> up the right sheet. Nukes begin falling. Get out of here with your That's fire. So, so, looking, looking for the trail, the trail uh, uh, rolled a 16, 16. He, he has this, this ability, ability, so... Always, always gets to roll at that vantage. It's at all vantage. It's an, it's an owl? Yes. yes. No, it's not. A snow, snow owl, specifically. specifically. So, he so he knows about, about snow. snow. It's cold. Okay. Well, I, I just googled how far an owl's vision, and surprisingly, it's similar to humans. I would have thought that they had more keen vision. So, if you were to send Fimblevinter up into the air a little bit, it is calm. There's no blizzard. Um, the sun is below the mountains, but it is uh, not yet twilight. <laughs> Fimblevinter can get a good view. There are actually several caravans that are traveling between the ten towns that it can spot. So, uh, I'd like to have him point us in the direction of the nearest one, and then I'll take a rope and tie it between myself and Blackjack so we don't get separated, just in case a blizzard does pop up on us. And we'll make our way towards that caravan and hopefully towards the city. Very good. The rest of you. Uh, uh, uh. Um, so to confirm real quick though, so my weapon, I also get the blessing on it? Yes. Okay. Correct. You get to choose a non-magical weapon in your inventory once per day to apply that to. <laughs> Alright. The rest of you, welcome to Tourmaline. Tourmaline as you can see, is a slightly uh, larger town. Not quite the size of East Haven and Bryn Shander and Targos, but uh, bigger bigger than the other ten towns. My good mead. <laughs> yeah, my good mead. <laughs> good. They have walls? <laughs> uh, no, they rely on the forest. It's what these wall of cities. <laughs> Surprisingly, <Stop>. uh... <laughs> Surprisingly, the uh, lake on this side of Tourmaline has not yet frozen over, so the fishing business here is still in full swing. The uh, town speaker, ba -ba -ba, where did he go? Is named Oris Mastu. God, I hated this name. I remember reading this the first time. I was like, that's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> Oris? Or. or for us, Mast for us, Matthew. Matthew, like wh what? Uh, he won the vote to be town speaker by a close and contentious election. Uh, he didn't. He wasn't looked on favorably because he was the uh, well. One, he's a half work, 
and uh, people still hold to some prejudices, though good will out, I suppose. The heraldry is an open, open-mouthed head of a fish at the bottom of a sky blue field. Its jaws are parted as it swallows a large pink rose oval. The oval is a tourmaline, symbolic of the town's gem mining. Between the gem mine and their fishing business, that is how they're able to stay afloat. They've got a pretty sizable militia, a tavern, an inn, and the town hall. You can pass right on through Tourmaline, or you can stop and uh, talk to people. Uh, if... This wasn't where that gnome is we're supposed to kill, right? Nope. Help negotiate, you know, investigate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. Yeah, fuck this place. Yep. <laughs> we'll, maybe we'll, we'll come back eventually. But we, we've got a murder to do. Yeah, we got the. Law, this is a good city. <laughs> yeah, this is the first part. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> I, I, they've got a wall. <laughs> Finally. Uh, let me take a look at the map real quick to get a sense of timing here. To get to from Tourmaline to Targos is 10 miles. So you can make that journey in about two and a half hours. The two of you on foot to get to Lonelywood uh, is going to be about three and a half hours. Or to Tourmaline, I'm sorry, not Lonelywood. So right now they've got... Oh, so we didn't run into any caravans? Not that we're headed to the city. Okay. Now, there are others that are heading, like, Outwards in the tundra towards Cair Danival, there's there's some going towards Goodmead. There's basically couriers, caravans, uh, and random travelers, nomads, and you can see them outside of the Dale too, through Fen the Winter. Uh, yeah. What about the one going to Goodmead? We know somebody there, Poncho. He could at least give us food and shelter, and maybe help us find our allies if they survived. Sure. It's, uh, you, you've been to Goodmead, and once you get a bearing on, probably I'd say about the Dwarven Valley, since you visited that area last session, you'd be able to get a good sense of where to go. Follow, just follow the path straight south. Okay. okay. Uh, those of you on the wagon, welcome to Targos. Targos is da, 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 me there we go Targos is led by speaker Nerth Maxil Den, Den Maxil Denar so you want to run that by us again? Uh, Nerth? <laughs> yes Maxil Denar it's one of those names that sucks yeah If that name oh, sounds man, familiar, yeah. it's not by coincidence. The town of Targos is obviously encircled by a large wall, which helps protect the town against raiding orcs and other threats from the wilderness. The wall extends out into the lake, creating a safe harbor for the town's boats. Yeah, these but people are just so smart. They're just the best town. The mm -hmm. smartest people in all yep. the ten towns. They're the number one towns. But, unfortunately, they're not quite as lucky as their neighbors in Tourmaline. Uh, their part of the harbor has completely frozen over, and their fishing and sailing business has suffered for it. They now have to rely on imports for food and fish. But luckily, okay. they can afford it. Due to the, the uh, harsh but fair rule of their speaker. From Targos, it is 45 minutes to Bryn Shander. Well, we're already freezing our dicks off. Might as well get, you know, might as well finish the job. Yep. 
Oh boy. We'll have to, we'll have to go back to this town or something. Yeah, we're yeah, just kind of like sightseeing road tripping right now. <laughs> yeah, let's go talk to the guys with the wall. Oh, look, another guy with a wall. Oh, I like this town. <laughs> it's just one, one big circle. circle. Indeed, Bryn Shander, the capital of the Ten Towns. It was Hi. once a settlement, a trader settlement, on top of a hill, and it was used as a kind of uh, halfway area between the early adventurers who first settled in the Dale and set up what is now known as the Ten Towns. Bryn Shander was always looked at as a kind of bastion of protection and a city of trade. Hi. Interesting town. So, I don't want to make it obvious, too obvious, that we're here to kill the nun. Just, uh... Okay. We'll Give try to find it. We'll save us on the artifacts, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll ask where he is. Then we find him. I'll, uh... Yep. Yeah. <laughs> then we go. In and out. Alright. The rumor that you heard was that the gnome was staying at the house of the Morning Lord. Oh, well, that's a convenient bit of information. <laughs> Let's go to the house of the Morning Lord. And the town is a hustle and a bustle. There's kids playing in the streets with some goat balls that are kind of in tatters a bit. They're playing with goat balls. Yep. Um, <laughs> Nice, large-sized goat ball. Okay, a large, nice-sized pair of goat balls. Yeah. That's what I heard, too. Just one, one of, one of these. The oh! <laughs> ah, of course. Goat balls. Goat balls. Of course. The House uh, of the Morning just... Lord is ran by a lady named Mashan. She seems quite annoyed as she's sweeping up the altar area. And she uh, does not refer to Lathander as the Morning Lord. She instead claims that Amantor is the true light. Who's Amantor? Mishan says Amantor is a usurper to Lathander. Or Lathander is a usurper to Amantor. Oh. Ah. So, wow. but do you still get magic powers from worshipping? I mean, I mean, do you still get magic powers from <laughs> oh, yeah, worshipping sorry. Amantor? Uh, sorry, I had well, something yes. in my throat. Yes, I've got clerical abilities. I, c I can heal. I, I can bring the dead back to life if Amantor grants, grants me those abilities. Ah, you have the ability to bring the dead back to life. For a fee, of course. Do you no. have that kind of money? Probably not. Uh, we've got... We're, we've got some artifacts that a gnome was asking for. Heard he might be holed up here. Oh, yes. You... You've heard the job posting that I posted out then. You posted out? Yes, you see, Copper has been quite an annoyance lately since his friend has left and not returned. Hardly helps out with services and chores, and though the two argued incessantly, now he just mopes about in his silly little silly little bear suit. I put out he an bear ad. Suit. He wears a Yes, he does. Listen, I, I don't want to get into that, but he... He's just so mopey and is neglecting duties, and I can't handle everything by myself, and so I put an ad out into some local couriers that to spread the word that anybody who could bring his friend back, or at least the experiments, may might cheer him up a bit. Alright, well, we might we, um, we can cheer him up. Where is it? Uh, he stays in the attic, looking out uh, the window usually, waiting for Macritus. Right. You might be able to be seeing the creeps, I assure you. Oh, I should hope uh, so. If Did you recover anything from the cabin? Oh, yeah. 
found this uh, test tube. Very, very good. And Official science business. Um, this is just a common tube that any alchemist would have on them. No, it's magic. <laughs> I think we need to go to the attic. Very well. Let me see, Copper, but I'm not paying you for this test tube. Fine. No will be thanks. <laughs> <laughs> blessing of our mentor among you, then. <laughs> Light's blessing to you. And she'll go back to annoyingly sweeping. <laughs> Let's go to the attic. Inside the, <laughs> inside the attic, you find a small man who is dressed in a fuzzy suit and a hood that uh, looks to be uh, homemade. The hood is a bear where it's not like the fangs or anything, it's just the eyes and the furry little little ears on it. And he's he looks quite snug and warm. <laughs> All right. I raise up my crossbow, shut the attic door. And I want to shoot him. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Uh, can I give a health action? Or are you a uh, stealth thing? <laughs> oh, try to, you I'm you, you use are with Piggy today. and uh, the real magpie, Kristoff. So you were there at the okay. house. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Bonus section aim. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, wow. <laughs> so, were you, uh, yeah, I, I, what Peggy said, were you sneaking? Yeah, like crouching down, uh, using my bonus section to aim, and then just trying to shoot him in the back. <laughs> He's looking longingly outside a window that's been frosted over, and he wipes it down every few moments. <laughs> and before he can even react to the creak in the in the stairs, an arrow pierces the back of his head, and he falls down on his bed, dead. Ah, good job, well done. Thank you, that was the one thing that's in my foot at me, you know? Revenge is actually pretty easy. <laughs> let's, 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 let me just pick for his pockets quickly. Uh, yeah. The uh, Blackjack and Fort, you can, uh, although it's a few miles out, you can see the east way ahead. It is a well-worn path that there's large uh, snow mounds that create kind of like a natural tunnel almost without the without the ceiling. So it's just valleys? We're in valleys? Yeah. Okay. Bunch gotcha. of snow valleys. But you can see the east way, and you can see Bryn Shander on top of one of these mounds in East Haven. You've got a good view of both of them. And as well, of course, Calvin's Cairn that is always looming over. Um, on your journeys... Oops, I... Uh, do, 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 do. On your journey, it is still quite calm and very peaceful hmm. though you do come across some creatures that are small uh, but are decked out in full heavy winter clothing the only recognizable feature of them is um, a tail that uh, sticks out and they are huddled together and walking uh, seemingly in the same direction as you, though coming from a different different area. Um, we should, we should hold, hold back, back and let them pass. Let them pass. I, I, don't I don't know of any friendly, friendly creatures in this area with tiny, tiny bodies and tails. tails. They're kobolds. Oh, no. The, the illusion, illusion is ruined. Is ruined. <laughs> the illusion would have been ruined when one of them turned over and look, gave you this look. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, they're Icewind Kobolds. <laughs> it's three Kobolds no. in a trench coat. Are 
Are any... they all in one trench <laughs> coat or are they in individual <laughs> trench coats? Uh, Is they're there all three in individual. Yeah. <laughs> there might be. There's only know. there's only one way to find out, and that's to go talk to them. They don't seem interested in talking to you either, for what it's worth. I, I, uh, hold on. I might have a thing for this. Can you cast a ritual while doing something simple like walking? Good question. Bottom line, movement will not disrupt concentration. You should be able to cast a ritual spell while traveling. I will take the next ten minutes. We're going to keep our distance from them, but over the next ten minutes, I'm going to comprehend kobold language, and after that ten minutes is up, I'll call out to them in their language. Hello? Hello. We'll stop for a second. You'll hear them talk amongst each other. Was that the wind? Is the wind playing tricks on us now? No, no, no. Back, Back here. here. Hello. Hello. And I'm, and I'm waving. waving. What do you want? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. We are traveling, traveling to one of the towns. towns and numbers, numbers are always safer, safer out here in the open tundra. tundra. Yeah? Uh, would, would you care, care to, to travel, travel with us? us? Where are you going? We're, We're headed to see a friend, friend in the town of Goodmead. We're not going to good meat. May, May I ask where you're headed? We can travel, travel with you until our paths split. We're going to East Haven. Hopefully they'll let us in. Oh, actually, I, I know some people in East Haven. We, we may be persuaded to go there instead. Blackjack, what, what do you say? Unfortunately, I have to switch to common to speak with this one. Hold on a moment. <laughs> <laughs> beep boop beep. <laughs> Are you talking to those three dogs in a trench coat? <laughs> I am. Oh, it's like Mando. Anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't care. I, I just we just died. I mean, whatever. Like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, East, East Haven's, Haven's a big enough city. city we can maybe get a message, message to them if they're still yeah. alive. Whatever you want, man. I feel All like right. I'm in Calling back out to them. Yes, yes we'll, we'll journey, journey with you to East Haven. Haven. Again, Again, the, the numbers, numbers are, are appreciated. And they will huddle up and start whispering amongst each other. And you can see occasionally one of their heads peek out to see if you're listening in or not. Well, I, can't I can't hear them right now, so... No. Fine. But you don't try to attack us. We won't, no. we won't fight you, you don't fight us. Agreed. Agreed. Weapons, Weapons and holsters. And holsters. And we'll walk up and join them. You are now nine kobolds in a trench coat. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> At level 18, our best friend Steve comes. And now we are four kobolds in a trench coat. <laughs> uh, those of you at Bryn Shander. Gonna loot the corpse. Take Ooh. his, uh, take his first suit. Got. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the first suit to uh, Piggy and tell her, <laughs> yeah, you can uh, put this around one of your pigs. Oh, okay. Because technically, I already got my bear coat, you know. So I already, I'm already decked out. So I'm just gonna oh. save him for my pigs. This is gnome sized. I'm not a gnome. <laughs> but this is what I turn into him. What's in these pockets? Copper had a coin purse that had 25 gold pieces, 15 silver pieces, and seven copper. He also had a spell book. A staff, more like a walking stick, but it has a focus embedded on the head of it. His fuzzy bear suit, of course. You write this all out? Yeah. Uh, da -da -da. GP. Let me convert this all into gold and we'll split it yeah. with me, yeah. Piggy, and Kristoff. Yep. Thank Good you. to know that Kristoff is okay with this. You're a reasonable person. Uh, so wait, why did we kill him? I'm, I'm totally confused right now. <laughs> oh, he led our friends to uh, being obliterated by a cursed artifact. This guy's, this guy's a murderer. Better that he's dead. It's uh, revenge, I... vengeance. Yeah, uh, totally. Uh, 
Those, Those are, are good spells. spells. My consciousness is clear now that we have revenge. Yeah. <laughs> so. Keep looting his body. 26 gold. <laughs> Christoph, you Hold should on. be interested in those. Hold on. In that fuzzy bear suit? Hell yeah! <laughs> I meant the spell book, but alright. All right. Bitch better have my honey! <laughs> uh, so, that's 26 gold in total with 5 silver pieces left over. So, um, yeah, I... the spells will take if no one needs them. So, 26 divided by 3. So, each of us gets 8 gold. Okay. Uh, and... One silver piece, I'll take two, because I'm kind. I mean, you're that, that, kill someone him. else can have the copies. You're, you're doing the math. math. Yeah. I, feel I feel like, like that, that earns you the money. The, the accountant's fee. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. Yeah, I can't do gets... math, sorry. Me either. I'm American, I'm American so, so you know I can't do math. Okay, so it's a spell book with those? Mm -hmm. So. Are they scrolls, or. It's a wizard spell book. Uh, they don't really even benefit me then. It's a, it's a wizard, wizard spell, spell book with a bunch of cleric, cleric spells? spells? Mm hmm. He's a weird guy. Shame we'll never know his back. Actually, <laughs> this place made of wood. Could I see that book room? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, here you go. Throw it. I, I guess I would like to inspect it though. So, he's a wizard, bunch of cleric spells. Is there anything on this book that symbolizes what god he prays to? Or worships or anything, because I, I guess to have a bunch of cleric spells, I'd assume there's some kind of religious thing to it. He follows Amontor. Amonator. Amontor. Uh, Amonator. Yeah. Um. Uh. Here you go. <laughs> I don't know how it's pronounced. I'm just. Amonator. Okay. Uh. Would I know much about that? Can I? The. Uh... You you weren't here for it, there was a check you could do. but uh, the owner, or I guess, uh, yeah, I guess owner would be appropriate of this uh, chapel, the House of the Morning Lord, was named Mishan. Uh, she's a priestess of Amonator, and she views Lathander as a usurper to Amonator. Amonator is also a god of justice and light and general good. Uh, mm -hmm. The names get confused by common folk when they refer to the Morning Lord. It could refer to Lathander or Amonator. Mashan chooses Amonator. Okay. Pretty much. Well, if either of you want to hold on to the book, you can, but I, s I suppose we can sell it later on. Book seals. Is this place made of wood? The entirety oh, of Brinchander. Okay, well... <laughs> picky, picky. Or the... Oops, not that one. Sorry. You should prob yep. probably burn this body. Uh, mm, I see. But we don't want to burn down the spill. Uh... Yeah. I could shape water and produce flame and put out... Yeah, that's a good fire idea. fire around, uh, you know, in case it... To prevent it from spreading around the house and just burn the body right there. Yeah, open a window so we don't die smoking. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. Opening the window is frigid, but not too terribly windy. Smash it, <laughs> Yep. So, where are you getting the water from? In a house with a kettle. <laughs> I've got a uh, water skin. Yeah, and a water skin. Water There's no running right? water in this town? It would be downstairs. He doesn't have a faucet and a kitchen in his bedroom. He lives in an attic, and he wears a bear suit. <laughs> no, dude, do it Avatar style. Just pull it out of your canteen. Yeah, just, uh... Bits and bobs of water. Just enough to fill Mag, a bucket. If Magpie's giving you a water skin, then that's good enough. You can just, just like yep. Alfor was saying, pop the cork and... Out comes this line of water. That's an easy bad. So, it's a controlled burn. <laughs> while you simultaneously keep the flames just circling around the body, not enough to, like, scorch the bed or anything, as smoke begins to billow, you're also uh, dousing the flames when they get too large. The smoke is heading right out of the window. Uh, the smell yep. is quite pungent, but the window is helping. 
you are burning flesh after all. <laughs> mm, that's that mm, smell, that smell is, is uh, quite mm. noticeable. <laughs> but the wind, like uh, I said, the window is helping. But now that, that smell is just wafting off into the city streets. Did doppelgangers eat humans? Oh, uh, no, not humans. Oh, okay. You know, I didn't expect you to be, you know, so into this. I really have more respect for you this day. <laughs> oh, I respect you too. We're see we're getting along. <laughs> Christoph, you're just behind the mask. A okay with everything. I mean they tried to kill our people. Uh you know I He didn't. Fine with it. He didn't at all. He did. Don't he lie. didn't at all. Don't that's, lie. That's Don't what lie. I was told. <laughs> he didn't at all. <laughs> That's what no I was told. Lie. Yep. No lying. Yep. <laughs> oh god. Stop well, lying. Uh this goes on for at least a couple of minutes before just a charred body. And uh if you want I mean you can go for upwards of a few hours before you get down to bone. But if you'd like to leave just a charred corpse, it'd be a f few minutes. But all the way down to the bone, yeah, it'd be a few hours. Which you can do. You know what, let's just... Let's just char the corpse. Then we can... Uh, do, we, do, we have a, do we have a box to put him in? And then we can just throw him outside the window. <laughs> just outside, chuck him outside the window. Yep. Wait, right. why, so why don't leave him in here? Bag? Well, we don't particularly want... No, I got my giant purse. Do you have a giant purse? I don't mind people like knowing he's dead, but it's better if you like have as little evidence tying as possible. Your mic yeah. sounds bad. Hey, don't say that. Much oh. better. I got, my purse should be big enough, you know. It's like a big, you know, like southern purse, you know. Stick his body in there. Could cut it out. We could like cut it out. <laughs> you guys are terrible. <laughs> Remove the legs. A chef. We're giving it. Aww. Hey, I don't have my pigs yet. Otherwise, they eat it. Smoky treat. <laughs> that would be really good. So, what are you doing with the body? Chucking them out the window, shoving them in your purse. I, can we bury him under I think we're gonna shove him in the pass. Yeah, we can I can bury, bury him, him under some ice. Yeah, that's a good idea. Water. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, this smoke, this smoky corpse froze to death. So you <laughs> freeze him in his bed, or are you? What? Where are you freezing him? I think we want to throw him outside the town. We get him out down inside the town from the purse first. Yep. Or we'll seven rooms if need be. I could freeze uh, Chunks' body so it looks like I'm just hauling frozen meat everywhere. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we could keep the Chunks. So, like, if we ever need to stop a bear from eating us, we can throw it. Yeah, this is our bear repellent. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm throwing... Okay, yeah. Uh... yeah, let's freeze up the ch let's freeze up the limbs and keep them yeah. around just in case. I, I, I do think this is a bit much. Uh, I, I, I completely understand you. Your feelings are valid. But unfortunately, you need to have, like, certain... This uh, is a democracy. There's, there's certain... <laughs> there's certain um, procedures you have to go through when you do these sorts of things. I've got quite a bit of experience. But if this yeah, is... Your input cool. is appreciated, though. Unfortunately, you know, not everyone is smart enough to recognize evil when they see it. So they might, like, try to put us in jail. And we're just going to make sure that we don't go to jail. It's like a five-minute exercise. They just won't realize that this is, uh... uh we're actually doing a service in... Uh, to avenge, you know... He's a murderer, right? Obviously, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. He, she got it. Yep. Alright, take the bits and let's get going. <laughs> yep. Show me my person. Get out of here. Oh... Uh... Are you leaving out the window or down the stairs? What do you think, Piggy? Well, what do you think, <laughs> Piggy and friend? 
Uh, you could go up the roof and be our lookout, and we'll head out town on foot. It is 20 feet tall, I same as climb. most buildings. Okay, well, I can climb down, actually. Easily. Yeah, you got a hook, so you could be our well. eyes in the sky in case uh, somebody tries to stop us. You got the rooftop access. <laughs> Second story work. Oh, that's some second story work, you see. Yep. <laughs> so you're just crawling out of the window, holding on, looking around, and then just very carefully, very slowly, making your way down the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I want to get, get out of town. Town life is continuing as normal. You're dressed as pretty much everyone else's, so they don't really take notice. Well, where should we go now? Ah. Work. And we'll go back to that cool town with, that we had a, a wall, you know, not the city oh, with yeah. the wall that we killed somebody in. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the one with the wall, like the cool one. Let's go. Yeah. Ooh. Pancho, you're dead. <laughs> he ain't here. He ain't here. Uh, you do, Fort and Blackjack, with your kobold friends, make it to East Haven, but they spend no time in East Haven. They, they immediately leave as soon as we get here? Yep. Do they at least say bye? They do. They thank you for uh, the safe travel and quote-unquote guarding them. <laughs> oh, I wasn't, I wasn't using, using them. them. I was, I was using them, them to guard, guard us. That, that was totally, totally the opposite. No, they, they seriously think that you were guarding them. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, they, that, that was not the case. case. They were <laughs> fodder. <laughs> I was going to pick them up and eat <laughs> them at anything that attacked us. <laughs> no, no. For some reason, the dice gods are being nice to you tonight. And the weather has been quite fair. Uh, so here in East Haven... Um, is there some type of courier service that we can reach out to? There is. Uh, all you'd have to do is flag down a guard, uh, ask him for a courier. You have met Captain Arlagoth before. You haven't met with the town speaker yet, but you no, do. No, we have not. But you do know Captain Arlagoth. She knows you, so you just tell a guard, "Hey, we know Captain." To the captain, they'll fetch a courier for you. Uh, so where do you think they would have gone, Blackjack? If they even survived, I don't. We don't even know that they're alive. I mean, let's let's talk Other about. Other than the fact that the tracks left. If I wasn't so goddamn trusting, I would say that they just left us without a trace. I, I have no idea. I, so, what we know is we woke up in the cabin. We had the five miles of daylight above us, and that the trail went south, but we lost their specific trail. So, so south from the cabin are the towns of Tourmaline and Lonelywood. And from Tourmaline, they could have gone really anywhere. They could have gone straight to Bryn Shander. They could have gone to Targos. Was it Bryn Shander where the goblin was supposed to be? The gnome? Yes. The gnome, sorry. Yes, yes, it was. So, you think they would have gone there trying, trying to track, track him down? I mean, it might be a good place to start. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, well then, do we, we want to send a message, or do we just want to, like, rent a sled and go there? I don't uh, think it's that far by sled. What time of day is it? Is it still, like, about to be night, or is it Yeah, it's day? about to be night. Yeah. Um... So is maybe an, starting travel overnight is not a good idea. Is there an uh, outfitter, like a stables or whatever, that we could rent a sled and team at? Absolutely. East Haven has all of the necessities you would need. An alchemist, a priest, a mage, in tavern, blacksmith, general goods. Oh! Would they have, like, a wizard who could scry the location of our... Uh, party members. Uh, they do actually. East Haven, like an arcanist. Yep. The uh, they, it's called the Magic Mistler. Okay. 
and uh, they charge. <laughs> I like that name. They charge 100 gold per spell slot level that you wish to cast. They can cast up to eight level spells. Uh, and let me. It's a fifth level. Scrying, Scrying is a fifth, fifth level spell. spell? Or so 500 <laughs> gold. We don't. We don't That's have that much gold. <laughs> I have a hundred gold. That's it. Ooh, I, got I got one. one. What, what about, about Sky? Ooh, Sky right. That spell never gets used. Hell yeah. What, what spell, spell level is it, though? It's, it's a second, second level, level spell. spell. Do we have 200 gold between us? us? How much do you have? <laughs> I, I think, think I have 100. I have, <laughs> I have 99 and a half. So, let's hope you have 100 like, and a half. I have 110. In the sky. All right, perfect. Holy shit, yeah. we're about to do Sky right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> First time in the any campaign <laughs> scanners. Yeah. The one time we actually get Only to use the Only time Skyright is gonna get to be used. Oh my god. It costs us like all, all of our money. money. <laughs> I have 99 and I have 110. <laughs> You're about to bat signal us over there. So I'm, I'm, I'm down, down to 9 gold, gold now. Well, welcome to Icewind Dale, where you spend all your gold on Skyright. <laughs> 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 I'm not even mad about it. Nah. Read the signs of the <laughs> that's a, that's a very very clever you know what i don't do this enough uh if you don't have it already for it take an inspiration because i like that oh yeah. yeah i like that that was good all right so so i don't bring inspiration enough for cool stuff in game i need to be more conscious about it minding our own business and then we see letters appear in the sky <laughs> summoning us There, there, there's, there's our, our ten, ten words, words for Skyrite. Sky <laughs> 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 oh man. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh shit, I should tell them where we are. We look up. It's also 11 hey guys, words, right? We, hey guys, we have a son we, for Blackjack. No, we it's lived in, in East, East Haven. Haven. Son! Blackjack, port. BJ. <laughs> there, there we go. <laughs> Fuck! I have to change my name now. That's hey eight. guys, we live. Hey, look at that. Hey guys, we lived in East Haven. Fort, so they live. So wait, so some guys live in a fort in East Haven, and they're giving <laughs> blowjobs. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so this, this is the problem with Warforged War names because they're, they're just things, things or actions. Or actions. <laughs> While it is a particularly sullen and dour night, it's overcast and dark clouds loom over most of the harbors and over Bryn Shander itself. The clouds do part, revealing a full moon, a sign of the new moon. Those of you that have stayed in ten towns for a bit know that on the new moon is when each of the towns do their sacrifices. And on the, and on the new moon is when the Council of Speakers meet after the sacrifices have been ensured. But the clouds part to reveal the message. Hey guys, we lived in East Haven, Fort slash BJ. I wonder who was getting a blowjob in a fort in East Haven. I know. <laughs> Who's living about it? You guys should <laughs> go find out. <laughs> was that good? They had their surprise. They lived. <laughs> they used thief. Uh, we're, we're actually trying to like God now. So is it that guy that we just uh, interviewed back there as she's looking at the frozen chunks in her purse? I'm just going to get your purse wet. I'm going to keep him frozen. <laughs> Let's go to East Haven and see what this blowjob for is about. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's a job there. That's some money. Um, All right, when, when I retire, retire that's, that's going to be, gonna the, be name the name of the club, of the club I run. <laughs> Blowjob Blow job fort. fort. <laughs> <laughs> Never lucky. Wow. wow. Never lucky. Never lucky. Once You're again. Welcome for finally using Skyrite, by the way. 
once again, you all have seemed to earn the favor in one way or another of the Frost Maiden, at least apparently. Perhaps Copper Nabernacker was meant to be a sacrifice, and in appeasing the Frost Maiden with your sacrifice, you have earned her blessing, and she has staved off the harsh winds and the blizzards that nice. would have normally confronted you on this dark evening. Instead, you see her a rare glimpse of the Frost Maiden riding oh. atop a gr great white rock. And as she circles her clawed hand in the air, the aurora begins to appear behind her. She's not so bad. Only, Only they, they can, can see it, or can, can we see it in East Haven as well? Uh, they can see it from Brinchander. Okay. She's not yet made it to East Haven. <laughs> Though on your way to East Haven, the backs of of all types of creatures <laughs> that you may have encountered in the Dale, birds are illuminated, and they are circling over what appears to be a mound of flesh that's quickly being dusted over by the light breeze of snow. They each take turns diving at the corpse. Uh, we rush up to the corpse? Or I rush up to the corpse? Okay. This is right here where these birds are. I love how we aren't tying ourselves together anymore. <laughs> well, wait, there's there's no wind right now, right? Uh, there, just a slight breeze. Yeah, yeah, so we're fine. There's no storm. There's no blizzard, yeah. Hopefully one doesn't hit and while I, you're, I while you're traveling. Try and, try and shoo the birds away. Oh! As they dive down, the one takes a claw, or a chunk of flesh out with his claws. The other one dives down and fakes you out and glides across the surface. And then I'll need initiatives. Piggy, with your uh, produced flame. Actually, Kristoff, do you have dark vision? I do not. So you would need some kind of light source as well. All right, then. All right, then. Uh, torch, or do you have the light cantrip? I do have the light cantrip, but I do want to see. Probably want to use a torch. We know how to pick the smart ones, don't we, Piggy? Oh, wait, the light cantrip oh, yeah. is. It's no concentration, you just use it and it's good to go. Yep, for ten minutes. Dope, dope, dope. Using it. You guys' initiatives suck. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> your initiative swallows. Ooh. Shut the and fuck up! You're, the light, wherever it's being cast, reveals the uh, horns and demonic beak of a periton. Well, those are nice birds. They're like great. Those. They're great. <laughs> Uh, Black Dragon 4, apologies. Uh, if you need to take a break, take a break. Uh, we will take a formal break, probably after this. Yep, yep. But, uh, yeah, apologies. But while, while, while the weather was kind to of them, the encounter rolls were not. Listen, Listen none, none of them speak kobold, so, so I totally understand, understand why they have to fight. Yeah, I mean, you guys could have had your own encounter, but again, you, <laughs> you played it smart. Not that you guys right. didn't play it smart, but... That's what wizards, wizards do. do. We, we play, play it smart. Kobolds are a bit yeah. more intelligent than Peritons are. And I we're gonna... <laughs> nice wow, you guys rolled shit. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Periton then. Late in our hot spurts. <laughs> uh, the one that was faking out... Faking you out, rather, is gonna fly... Straight forward and try to hit you with its beak or its horns first. 23 to hit. That will hit. Jesus. For 13 points of piercing damage. That's not super nice. Not too bad. And then it will, as it sweeps up. It's going to try to claw you with its talons. 
Okay, so it came up to me, attacked me, then it swooped up and it came back down? Yep. No, it, All it, right. it dove down from the from where it was and then whooshed forward, gored you with its horns, and now as it's flying back up, its talons are raking against you. So the second, okay, so the talons is like, I have the 20 hits. Okay. For Oof. nine points of piercing. All right, wow. Uh, can I hit it while it flies up? You cannot. <laughs> Damn. It goes and just pierces into your gut, then claws your face and swoops right back up. And it'll go on to the real magpie. Up is how tall are these trees? Uh, 10 to 15 feet. Depending, the the larger ones would be fifteen. The smaller ones would be ten. Okay, I spend all my movement to climb up on the tree. Okay. Then I'm gonna bonus action stealth. You would have advantage being hidden in the pines. I do have the advantage. That is nice. Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it goes off passive. They don't. I, I thought it was just a straight perception check. Oh, it's usually off passive, but if you want to do perception, that's also fine. Uh, hmm. I don't mind how you do it. I, li I like the rolls, I just because I like rolling dice. That's uh, that's completely valid. <laughs> uh, the one the one in the back doesn't notice you, but the one flying up does see you crawling. So the one that's flying, this one's on the ground currently pecking at the corpse. Okay. I'm going to shoot the one that doesn't notice me. Okay. Hopefully Kristoff has it hand. Ooh. Ooh. 20's going to hit for 18 points of piercing. Well, the... Ten, so the, 28 damage. Oh, 28. Oh, yeah. Sneak, uh, sneak. Fuck. <laughs> of a rope. Uh, the one Periton is swooping up, but the arrow's... <laughs> straight through the darkness, piercing the periton, and it sends out a horrible, infernal squawk. Alright, it's my turn. Um, you, you hit that one, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I struck it. Kristoff. <sighs> Fuck. Um... One second of reading. You're good. Okay, so I can do a cantrip action, then a bonus action spell, right? I don't have to. I don't have to flip it, right? Correct. As long as the leveled spell is a bonus action, you can cast an action, or you can use an action to cast a cantrip. Yep. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm gonna do. Hold the dead then on the one that he hit. Ooh. And that's a wisdom save. They fail. Nice. They so six fail damage. For six damage. And the squawk intensifies until it just sounds like its lungs collapse on it and it. Nice. And nice. Falls down dead. Um, and then on myself, I'm going to cast Sanctuary. I like that spell. That spell is fucking good. You have to yell it like the guy from Hunchback. Sanctuary! sanctuary! Oh, it's not I good. declare Sanctuary! I <laughs> declare bankruptcy! <laughs> My Michael, that's not how it works. <laughs> Piggy, uh, Kristoff, were you done? Oh uh, yeah, that will end the turn. All right, Piggy, on to you. Yep. Back, I hit it. Oh yeah. That's gonna work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the wings are pigs. It clips a wingtip. Yes. <laughs> but does singe it. Anything else? No. Alrighty. 
onto the periton who will fly 15 feet up to be at 30 feet and then fly 30 feet straight down towards you Kristoff those are 12 it has to attack a different creature um, oh yeah on well, a failed fails, yeah. must choose a new creature so as it swoops down it already used 15 feet of movement so it's only got 45 left and it's ground level ooh magpie this is the That's one that saw you too oh, the other the, yeah the other one is the one that didn't see you oh but uh oh yeah he would have the movement he flew 15 feet up 30 feet down magpie's in a tree x about a feet up correct correct uh 15 feet up so he would not have the movement to get to you but he would start to fly in your direction and it'll go on to you then magpie okay. i'm gonna can i try to shuffle into a part of the tree where he can't see me yeah just uh, like squeeze around the branch hope <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Do I still have advantage? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, why not? It's dark, and hell is hot. Wow. A no <laughs> In that case, no. I am going to... Can I try to, like, jump from the tree and land on top of it? On the periton? Yeah. Oh boy, uh, I would need an acrobatics check. How big is it? The periton? It is yeah. a medium sized creature. So, so it's like four foot? Uh, yeah, it's like body is small, but the wingspan is like 10 feet wide. Yeah, I want to try to like jump on it. Okay. So, acrobatics check? Yep. Hmm. Not going to be good enough as the bird is swooping towards I'll the spend my inspiration. <gasps> okay, go ahead. Re roll that. There you go. <laughs> so, as it's swooping up, you <laughs> leash out and what? You're just going to fall with it? Grab it and fall? I'm going to fall with it, try to make it so we either he takes some of my fall damage or we both take fall damage. He's going to blanket the fall. <laughs> and you land on top of the periton and just a poof, cloud of snow and uh, like dust <laughs> goes up and you, you're wrestling this periton on the ground now. You're both prone but he did break your fall. Okay. <laughs> I want to try to lay on top of him. <laughs> That's my action, right? Yeah, you can do quite easily. You're getting the better of this beast, especially in your giant goliath form. You're just wrestling this bird, is squawking and trying to get up, but you're just too big, too mighty. <laughs> Christoph said. <laughs> <laughs> On to you, Christoph. Hmm. Like five feet away. Uh, I guess I need to move up a little bit to see. So I guess I, on my character, I can see a little bit. Is it completely dark or? Um, no, you guys are in the Aurora. So it's it's twilight conditions. Think of when you go outside and it's a full moon out. Yes, you can see, but you can't see very well. So it'd be disadvantage though, or? On a ranged attack? Yeah. No, no, it's normal. Okay, okay, okay. Then it's, I It's just will... not bright light. It's very, very dim light. Let's just do Toll of the Dead on the thing again. Another wisdom save. It'll make it. Oh. Perhaps the Goliath is muffling its its ears and it can't hear the chime of the bell. Alright, and after that I assume uh, they've got him. That'll drop my sanctuary as well. And I will run over to the person in the snow and inspect it. Him, whatever. Now I'm my turn. Very good. Under no circumstances am I letting go of this periton. <laughs> <laughs> Piggy. <laughs> On to you. Yeah, let's see if I can uh, ignite that. Eight. 
Ooh, 15 is going to hit. There we go, that's better. For 8 points of damage. Nice. So, between Magpie wrestling it, like rolling around in it, it exposes its breast area and you just use the opportunity to ignite the chesties. Who wants some roasted chicken? <laughs> Anything else? No. Alright. Periton is going to attempt a strength check to break free of your damned grapple. Go ahead and give me. Uh, no, no, I guess it'd be acrobatics, right? Yeah. He does break free. The bird wants to fly. <laughs> <laughs> the bird does want to fly, and he's gonna go sixty feet up. Does he have to spend half his movement to stand up? Oh, I suppose you're right. I suppose you're right. <laughs> he'll do, he'll go thirty feet up, but you still don't get opportunity attacks. <laughs> On to you. <laughs> That's the most bullshit ability I've ever seen. Just nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Nope. That and Great Cleric, you don't get crits. Magpie. <laughs> Magpie is going to roll her over, pick up a snowball, <laughs> throw it at Piggy, pick up another snowball, actually, and then throw it at Kristoff, so that's my item interaction. <laughs> Then I'm going to bonus action aim the parrot. Um, and I'm gonna shoot. <laughs> Ooh, 17's gonna hit for 29 damage, you like a proper skeet shooter. Clay pigeons in the air, it might as well be. And as you just are tracing it and loose the arrow and straight and true, it sinks down and you've got a good meal in front of you. Yeah, Two fuck it, let's cook these guys up. Let's cook these guys up. Alright, so I rush over to the body. What do we see? It is the body of an orc, or what remains of an orc anyway. Most of his entrails, his eyeballs have been picked loose. But one thing that is uh, very apparent is a kind of uh, blood inscription on the forehead that looks like three arrows piercing a skull. And he is dead dead. He is dead dead. His entrails were being picked clean by these birds. <sighs> How awful. Um... Can I search his body? Does he have anything... I'm not trying to steal anything, but just see it. Does he have anything else on him? Uh, he said, I the, three. the weaponry. It was a it was a hand axe and well, two hand axes and then a great sword. Okay. The rations that he did have are gone. You can like see the tin and the pouch that was carrying them, and it's just been picked open. Uh, well, uh. Magpie Piggy, I don't, I don't know if you have a shovel, but I think we should give this orc a proper burial. Now, I don't understand why you want to do that, but I appreciate that that is something you want to do. I personally don't have a shovel. Piggy. Hmm. Don't really care myself, but. But do you have a shovel? I can shape water into a shovel. Yeah, I shuffle. <laughs> I shovel. The answer is always shape water. <laughs> I will help you dig a hole. Uh, I assume it's. I assume it's too cold. Uh... I thought we burn it. I mean, yeah, produce flame, burn it, sh it gets because watery, we, shape it into a shovel. Agreeable? Yep. Is, no, I, is burning okay for you? I, I think we should just leave him by a tree then. Uh, we can at least give him some rest out, out of the trail. Off the trail, at least. There's got to be some part of beauty to it, you know, like, we're 
returning him to nature and if an animal eats him that's like the ecosystem in it damn you <laughs> sure let's go leave him by a tree and get back on the road yeah so i drag him over to this tree at least over here mm -hmm. um kind of prop is well i guess try and Put his organs back in as much as possible. Make it look okay, you know? Oh, have his gruesome. armor kind of over it. Take his arms, have them folded over his chest. And I would uh, say a prayer to God for him. As we then head back out. And we'll take our first break there. Uh, what do you think? Do you want the landing page or do you want Icewind Dale with all the other stuff on it? Like yes. The landing page. Okay, I'll keep the landing page on. We'll take so our Mike first... Get dead <laughs> yeah, you still have it. You know... Did you guys ever do that? Or did I skip over that? I think I may have skipped over it. Skipped over what? Burying Copper Knobber Knocker. Oh, no, we didn't. We ain't burying him. We're keeping him. Oh. We keep the bits of him. <laughs> In we chunks. We take seven of his arms and froze him up. Oh, that's right, for Piggy's farm. Yeah. Which... Uh, we'll take a good, like, ten minute break. Okay. Because you've all reached level five. Oh, Ooh. Yay! Yay! Now we end the game. Now we yeah. Welcome back after an extended break. We find Magpie, Piggy, uh. and Kristoff on their way to East Haven, but have to deal with some pesky, pesky birds. Where Blackjack and Fort are currently in East Haven. What were you guys doing during this time? You mean pecky birds? Uh, I guess, I guess we're, we're going to head to the inn. inn. We're going to go in the inn. Yeah, or, or a tavern? Is there, is there an inn or a tavern? tavern? Are they one and the same? same? They're not the same. The wet trout is the tavern. You had been there before. Uh, that's kind of in the, the shady part of town, but it was a decent enough tavern. The inn is where you can stay the night. Oh, I remember the wet trout. I murdered a guy near there. Huh. Uh, we should probably stay at the White Lady Inn for a few days and wait for our companions if they saw the message. Yeah. If, if after, like, three days they don't show up, I guess we're on our own. So. Um... I'm for it. How I'm much to it. rent a room at the White Lady Inn? Is it ten gold or less? <laughs> well, the the last time you passed by the White Lady Inn was at the public execution of Dazan, a member of the Arcane Brotherhood, who was accused of killing a band of adventurers that he had hired to find ancient artifacts. When you passed by the White Lady Inn, there was a crowd gathered around a halfling bard who had begun just setting up his stage in front of the hearth and playing a song. The bard is still here, though he's not playing a song. There are several of the patrons of the tavern gathered around a circle, all holding candles. The halfling greets you as you walk in. Ah! You're just in time, just in time. I'm about to tell the tale of the White Lady of Lac Denashir. Please join us. Uh, okay. okay. I'll have a seat. Blackjack? I'm just standing in amazement. I had never met somebody else like this before. <laughs> He's, He's never, never seen, seen another bard. bard. Nope. I don't even know what a bard is. <laughs> <laughs> and he pulls out his fiddle that was laying next to him and begins plucking it the tale of the white lady her husband a miser who kept his treasure in a heavy locked chest that never left his side perhaps it was this heavy chest that capsized his boat and sent him to his sunken grave. Or perhaps it was the fright of seeing his dead wife 
that caused him to capsize the boat and drown. And all the tavern folk are just focused on every single word he's saying. So what, either, did you hear that? either way, I'm certain the men's treasure lies at the bottom of the lake to this day, waiting for some, in his eyes, glance around the room and meet Fort and Blackjack, waiting for some intrepid explorer to find it. And the right the owner of the inn is a human named Bartaban, and he just kind of scoffs at the tale. Say you barman. Oh, Ronaldo, always telling your tall tales. And Ronaldo will chime back out. We live in dark times, Barban. Dark times. Perhaps the spirit of the White Lady can help. I can contact her, you know. Aren't you curious to hear what she has to say? And a few of the tavern folk are gonna kind of like jaw jaw wide and eyes wide. Just, jaw yeah, jaw. Yeah, yeah. Others are just gonna get up and leave. Also <laughs> saying it's a bunch of poppycock. You guys are going to miss. You guys are going to miss it. What are you doing? Bunch of nonsense. Contacting spirits of the dead. There's no lady of lack of Come on. Time to go home. Uh, I would like to follow Ronaldo or talk to him more about this chest at the bottom of the lake. I would like to follow him as well, but talk to him about other things. And Easy gets up off his stool. Come to my quarters. We have the means necessary to contact the Lady of the Lek. I don't know if I want to contact the Lady. I was just wanting info on the chest. She knows its location. Uh... Okay. And a small handful of townsfolk gather in around you. They all sit cross-legged with a candle in their laps. And Ronaldo lights several incense around the room. And the smoke from these... The incense begins to fill the room. He's got multicolored lamps and fine silks that are hung from the rafters and the light from several candles around the townsfolk are holding is illuminating the rest of the room few of them look quite uncomfortable Ronaldo pushes back his sleeves raises his hands and closes his eyes and intones Lady who watches from the lake come to us in our darkest hour tell us what you've seen and he'll extend a hand out the rest of the townsfolk look just as confused as you guys so sorry. <laughs> I was trying to hit the I button and after a moment of silence, thick frost begins to form on the inside of the room's windows, turning them opaque, and the candles oh. go out, one by one. Charlie. The lady is here. Her spirit is close. And he'll hold a hand out towards Fort and Blackjack. He's still far away from you, not asking you to grab, but... Reach out. Accept her presence. If it's okay, the last time I touched something weird, I died. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep my hands to myself. Instead of just reaching out, I'm gonna go ahead and make one of them the arcana checks. Oh, not very good. To see what the hell's going on. There's magic afoot. Thanks. Cool. You know what? 
I'm a pretty trusting guy. I'm gonna grab his hand. No, he's far. Oh. He's he's a room space away. He's just saying reach out spiritually. Oh, like a Californian blondie. Got it. All right. So reach out I and touch me. Spiritually, I'm on his level. I got it. I'm I'm there. I guess I'm I will open, open my, my spiritual, spiritual doors. doors. And he kind of leans back and has his arms open wide and he opens his eyes which are now glossed over entirely by white oh lord and you hear a spirited voice call out through Ronaldo three questions oh no Fort, I think you better take this one. Where, Where is, is the treasure? Lack <laughs> Demashir. Yeah. Yeah. Could've, Could've seen, seen that. that. Super, Super vague answer, answer coming a mile away. away. That's, That's what fine. happened to you? You spoke spoken out loud. That's, That's a, question. a question. One specifics. One details. <laughs> you can't uh, add an addendum to the on. question afterwards. afterwards. That's not no, how spirits that was, work. I didn't say that to the spirit. I said that to Scott. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think <laughs> of the answer to your question in two to five <laughs> words. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, how did you die was the question. I don't, yeah, I don't even remember, remember what his question was. was. I just know he phrased it in the form of a Jeopardy, Jeopardy answer, so. <laughs> <laughs> Drowned. So, so the, the treasure's, treasure's in Lake Denishir and you drowned. And, so and the, the last, last question, question is, what is, what is your name? name? Ooh. Gotcha, gotcha, bitch! Ooh. <laughs> kind of. If you're a demon, you have to tell me your name. Uh, and you have to reply truthfully. truthfully. Ergo, I, I would know the demon's, demon's true name if there's, there's a demon possessing him. One of the windows behind Ronaldo will shatter. And he will fall down to his knees and exhale a cold breath of steam <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, that's such a good <laughs> bullshit oh, oh that's, that's so, so weak so, so the spirit doesn't, doesn't know its own name, name. alright All right. that's, that's good, good to know. know Yeah. The some of the townsfolk will begin whispering amongst each other some of them claiming that they've seen this lady before in the town hall, just past the speaker's office. Others will call complete bullshit on that. Does the window say invisible dwarves? It, it does. Uh, oh, it did. Yeah, the handout betrays me. It does. You're a traitor. So... so can I ask, I guess, just the townspeople, I guess, at this point, because uh, Ronaldo, I'm sure, is, like, passed the fuck out after doing that. Um, so, is, is the white lady from your town? Is she from well, East Haven's past? Not so far past, really. Um, see, there was a ship that sunk many months ago. The head of the ship had this woman carved out of a black crystalline like substance and the husband and the wife found great riches on the lock and he safe and prospered for it and one day the the ship went down all that was covered recovered was the head of the ship now sits on display at the town hall Wait, Wait, the, the giant, giant black, black crystal? crystal? Yeah, yeah, and the mass that's attached to it. 
rubbing, rubbing the space where his nose, nose would be <laughs> to just show his absolute, absolute frustration. frustration. You people, people don't know about walls. <laughs> you don't know about the demonic crystals. <laughs> you know nothing. Okay. So, so what, what was this lady's, lady's name? name? I don't know. You said, you said it was a couple, couple of months ago. ago. How, How do you not know her name? Well, I don't know anybody's name around here. Just the people I associate with. Dude, I Dude, gotta, I gotta tell, you tell you something. something. Honestly, Honestly, you're, you're just... just... How do you, How do you know not anybody's know anybody's name? What? what? I mean... You, you live, live in a town. town. Don't, don't you know, like, the, the speaker's name? name? We live in... And the captain of the guard's name? You don't know this, like, super powerful rich lord's name? No, he wasn't a rich lord. He was just a, a ferryman. I mean, ferrymen are pretty well paid, especially. He said he had riches. riches. Well, yeah, that I mean, he's rich. Riches doesn't doesn't mean much. I mean, there's some estates around here, sure. But, I mean, there, this town is 750 people strong. I don't. I can't. Anyone around here have known his name, or her name? Perhaps. <laughs> Alright, All right. I've had enough of this townsperson. Go find the captain of the guard. She, she seemed, seemed like a well-informed well person. person. I had to. <laughs> I had to, sorry. Would, Would scratch his chin? chin. Hmm. That was family guy, come on. Perhaps. <laughs> I find that argument shallow and pedantic. Peter, do you I, know I what that means? Several, several hours later. later. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> right, so, so seeking, seeking the captain, captain of the Guard. Yes. Um, one moment. Magpie, Piggy, and Kristoff, you do finally arrive at the gates of East Haven. Ah. Uh. This town still sucks because there's no wall, but and I don't have to do it. Yeah. Several now. posters that say, watch thy pocket. <laughs> have Wait, I been to this town before? This you, you have, have not, not no. no. Well, you may have, but not with this group. You you uh, were in Icewind Dale for a little bit. So, okay. so. Let's, let's make our way... Peggy, where do you think that'll be? Uh, probably a place that we've already been to. They burned that guy. Yeah. Wow. Baby Miles. All right, let's go to where they burned the guy then. We just like burning people. It's like our thing. Go look for him. Also, pick some pockets on the way. Because <laughs> that's the customs of this town. We're just honoring tradition. Who would you like to pickpocket? And what would you like to try to steal? I would like to pickpocket Fernandez, who is a tiefling trickster cleric with a, with a bad attitude. I want to pickpocket him. Go ahead and make me a sleight of hand check. Oh, Bananda's probably one like that. Oh, his passive perception is 10. So right, what is Bananda's the tiefling? <laughs> he grabs, uh, he, he grabs your wrist as he feels it rustling around in his pocket. Not today, friend. Sorry. Ah, it's all good, mate. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, Fernandez, the <laughs> cleric. <laughs> That's got to be your next character. That's got to be your next. He'll come back. He's gonna. He's gonna Better. be the speaker of East Haven soon. I'll write a note. <laughs> um, the town square is empty. The aurora is out, so most people are at home in their houses, trying to stay warm.
Yeah, let's go to where they burnt the guy and uh That's the town square. It's like a beacon of hope, you know? Yeah, let's let's have a look out for Fort and uh the goat. Uh you guys are okay. time. You yeah. guys are uh, staying the night at the White Lady Inn? <laughs> Who, me, me and, and Blackjack? Blackjack? Yeah. Uh, no, no we, we were, were looking for, for the guard. guard. Or the, yeah, the oh, that's from right. The guard. That's right. So, so maybe, maybe she's, she's coming, coming to the White Lady Inn, or, or maybe she would be at the tavern, tavern or the town hall? Town hall. Okay, great. great. We're, we're going, going right to the giant black ice crystal of doom. Cool. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um... Probably in some kind of perspective, maybe. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt. You would have seen some people travel that look particularly like a goat man and a robot bundled up with their hoods up, shivering in the cold, traveling through the streets. They're one of very, very few people that aren't guards that are headed towards the town hall. Pretty, Pretty dead, dead giveaway. giveaway. I have a snow, snow owl, owl on my shoulder. shoulder. If he's I not actively searching, searching. He's, he's like just perched on me. On me so. so I will go and uh, talk to them. Like, hey! I I, I think, think I recognize that voice. voice. Hold, Hold on a second. second. Holy, Holy shit, magpie! magpie. Did, did you get our message? message? It was I did. Message. Holy uh, shit, magpie! Who'd you stole your soul to? What? what? I mean, you're alive. Uh, you just know yourself. Yeah, to. you're a pile of ash. The last time we saw you guys. Ah, uh, so, so funny, funny story, story about, about that. that. It's not that funny. <laughs> well, well, it's, it's pretty, pretty funny because we, we have, have a son now. now. Uh, yeah, we huh? didn't. Let me. Can I? Can I? We did not have a son together. I mean, I, mean, I, have, I have a son. son. Yeah, I I I, I uh, left okay. for cigarettes. Please, what, what happened? What happened, guys? Come on, come on. So we went to the edge of the spirit realm, I guess? The ethereal plane? Border ethereal. The border ethereal, right on the edge of the ethereal plane. Like right on the cusp. And uh, we met with a guy there named Macritus, who was living in the Black Cabin with a guy named Copper. Uh, and Blackjack and I surmised that the guy named Copper was probably the gnome looking for information from the Black Cabin. Anyway, didn't meet him. Uh, but Macritus helped us decipher the blueprints and fix his invention. So now it works. But I haven't used it yet. Because I don't want to die again. Ah, uh, fair enough. I don't want to die. About uh, Copper, Cooper, whatever his name is, the gnome. Uh -huh. Cooper. People to die. <laughs> Yeah, yeah did, you, did you did you find, you find him? him? Yeah, uh, open your purse. <laughs> uh, okay. Is that steak? <laughs> what it, Wait, no, what that's you, the Puritans. Is that a hand? What are you, what are you, what are you putting, putting in here? here? Why, why, are, why am I opening the purse? The purse? <laughs> Put a frozen finger in that. <laughs> Magpie, Magpie, why would you do, you do this? Let people to die, got you killed. Why, why would you think, think I would want, want a finger? finger? Well, it's the, the guy who got who sent people there to get killed. I pull out more chunks out of my purse. Yeah, we won't be seeing him again. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> Did you guys get anything, anything that, that wasn't him, him from, from him? him? Like, like information, information? Items, items, the reward, thing? maybe. Uh, we looted uh, his body. Oh. <laughs> we looted his body. Are we talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. We cleaned up. Oh. The, we cleaned up the scene real good. They won't be able to know it was us. I don't, I don't care, care about anything, anything that was said after I heard the word spellbook. Spell <laughs> Give me. It's <laughs> a really easy murder. All things right. said. It one shot. Here you go, I hand it over. Thank, Thank you, Kristoff. You, you stayed, stayed with the party. party. Uh, that I did. He's very loyal. Oh, that's that's good so dog. good to hear. Still uh, searching anyway, for a dur, but cannot find him. Sorry, you're searching for what? A dur. A dur. Yes. yes. We, will we will find him. him. But I'm sure. I have not found him yet. This conversation bringing us to the town hall. 
Oh, we were walking and talking. Well, well actually, yeah, yeah I was gonna, gonna tell, tell you guys, we're looking for the, the uh, guard captain, because we heard a weird rumor while we were hanging out here. Apparently there's a big pile of treasure at the bottom of that lake. And some person called the White Lady knows about it. Well, apparently this White Lady and her husband were traveling on the lake on their boat, which had a black chardolin uh, headpiece. What, what do you call that? Bow? I don't know. I'm not a boat guy. But the front of it is all chardolin. And, and apparently, apparently that Shardolin is on display in the town hall, hall so be prepared, be prepared for, for evil when we walk in. Uh, but, but anyway, we gotta go find out who this white lady is, and maybe verify some information before we go after this treasure. Unless, Unless you, know, you know, you guys wanted to do other stuff. stuff. You guys wanna do other stuff? I do like treasure. No, I do like treasure. I kinda yeah, figured you did like treasure. Oh. I do like treasure. I'm a bit of a pirate. No, 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 no like eye patch though. though. Also, also just on a boat. Cool, cool times. times. Uh, I'm not, I'm not cursed, cursed anymore. anymore. I, fixed I fixed it. it. Oh, so you pray to a higher power? I, I used two, two level, level three spell slots. slots. Oh, well, that's that's just Both as valid. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how, how I, I did it. I, I, I learned new magics and, and then used them. them. All right, let's go see this Chardolin. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go see, see this guard. big pile of Shardolin. Hello, guards. Go well. I mean, hello, guards. Yeah, yeah, you I gotta make sure you're using, using your magpie, magpie voice. voice. Yeah, confuse it. Hello, guards. I am Magpie, greatest hunter of the far north. I All wish right. to see All right, the then. Missile. All right, then. You step along now. We don't like... No, uh, I wish... No, no, hold no. on, Ma Ma Magpie, Magpie, we are here to see the captain of the guard, we've met with her before on occasion and have questions for her regarding our mission. And she will turn around, oh yeah, yeah you, uh, last time we talked, you didn't feel like helping out too much, but, uh, and she's reading over a scroll, seems you've helped out the other towns. Kara Koenig and Kara Dinnaval seem to speak highly of you. Why are you here? Especially at this hour. Uh, well, you see, Rinaldo, carrying out his seance, uh, got us intrigued, and we were wondering if you perhaps knew the name of this Lord and Lady. Well, to be honest with you, I never really sat in on any of his, any of his business. Oh, oh, well, let me relay the story to you without relaying the story to you again. Yep. And then, <laughs> and then I'll ask the question again. So, who might this lord and lady be? Oh, well. The... Hmm. Uh-oh. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Would, 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 would anyone, anyone in town possibly, possibly know who this is? is? The speaker, maybe? Well, the speaker's inside tended to whatever he needs to be doing, uh, but you're free to step inside if you'd like. Uh, I'm not sure he'd like a, a meeting with you. I, I can at least I can at least ask. Um, inside, inside with, with the giant black chardolin from the bow of the ship, that is quite possibly corrupting everyone in that building. Don't worry, we got your back. You want, you want us, us to go, go inside of that building? I, I think we'll be fine for it. God will be there for us. <sighs> okay. Everybody chat chat real smooth. <laughs> yes, please make an introduction with the, uh, the speaker for us. Mm -hmm. Follow me, just over here. And begins opening up a series of doors. The area here is quite well decorated. Um, 
to the uh, southern end of the wall, or southern end of the wall, is a five foot long stuffed knucklehead trout. Big boy. And under it is a plaque that reads, Big Knuck, caught by East Haven fishers during the summer of 1479 BR. It's Shut f- up. It does, it does not, not say, say Big, big Knuck. knuck. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Big Nuck. <laughs> Big Nuck. Alright, we, we have, have to find Bigger Nuck and make, make the, the new record. record. It is currently 1483, DR. Also, it's only been four years since that bad boy was caught. And they've been in the rhyme for two of them. Oh, that reminds me. Would one need special tools to get through the ice? In order order to, like, like, ice fish? fish? Vis-a-vis or send send down a familiar that can swim and search for the treasure? Uh, There is something for that. Uh, Let me get back to you on that. There there is something on on ice fishing. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Read up on it and tell us next week or whatever. Yeah, or, uh, yeah. I'll let you know. Um, Okay. But Captain Arlegoth, anyway, goes on to the southern door and uh, apologies here let me just make it easy on everybody because I don't have the light source prepared just make it bright in here eh sorry Kristoff <laughs> the real magpie is just going round and round just right out of fucking round window she goes. magpie is Making his own adventure. <laughs> uh, ooh, Kristoff. As Captain Argoth opens the door, <laughs> you will. Oh, wait, I thought he was already in there. She. She. And yes, she. She is already in there. Oh, okay, then yeah. Sorry, I'm just following where she's leading us hey, at the moment. It's alright. It's alright. Oh, God. Okay, sure. <laughs> There's low burning lanterns that cast just the gentlest of glow upon a tall the... black object in the center of the room. Um... Although one could easily mistake it for a statue, this object is actually the figurehead of a ship and is carved in the likeness of a winged demon. The demon-shaped huh. figurehead stands eight feet tall and shards of wood jut out from the demon's back at the points where the figurehead once attached to the hull of the ship. You guys see that's been lashed to the figurehead with rope a scrawny woman who is dripping wet. Her long, white hair hangs over her face, obscuring it completely. Captain Arlegoth is completely ignoring it, as if she doesn't even see it. What in the fuck is that? Well, that's the, uh, that's the... The front of the ship that was recovered a, a couple months ago. <laughs> no, no. woman strapped to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. that that's, that's what we're worried, worried about. about. <laughs> uh, no, that's solid black crystal and, and some wood. No, no the, 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 the wet, wet girl. girl. That's the fucking. <gasps> that's, that's, that's the lady. The lady. That's, that's the lady. white lady. She is white. She and a lady. And, the and she's wet. wet. As you acknowledge her presence, the woman begins sobbing, and Ooh. Captain... Oh god, Arlegoth it's a witch from Left 4 Dead. Again. S- come on, just the speaker's door is just over here. Uh, Wait. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna approach, approach the, the he's person. Not even, he's not even acknowledging that we're mentioning it? She, and no. <laughs> Whatever. Everything's uh, a heat. Can, can I make an arcana, arcana check, check to see if this person, person is not actually a person, person or not? Yeah. It's a ghost. Ah, it's a ghost! <laughs> it's, it's a ghost. Ghost, 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 ghost. And as you get closer inspecting it, your lens is kind of... <laughs> getting closer inspection. Yep, that's a ghost! She will <laughs> then screech... And throw back her head, revealing a bear skull with a decaying, toothy grin. 
and the ropes binding the figurehead fade away. Oh no. And then I'll need oh, initiatives, right. but uh, first, uh, Fort, I need a wisdom save. Actually, oh, no. everybody in the room, I need a wisdom save. What? All right, uh, quick question for when we leveled up. Did we get our HP back? Yes. All right. Not your spell slots or class abilities, but HP, yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, wisdom save from all of us. Ooh, blackjack. Buddy, you know what? Oh I God. I have inspiration that I can use. No, don't don't, don't, don't do, do that. that. Roll, Roll it again. again. Okay. It's probably it's, still it's gonna the go same far, effect, but yeah. Fuck. Wow. <laughs> Well, I, can, uh, I can't do anything about that. You have to use the second one. <laughs> I tried, I tried buddy. buddy. Can I, I use my one. inspiration to roll again? I did pretty fucking good. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, did we roll? Oh, now you can roll initiatives. Okay. Sorry, I, normally I don't like to do this, do it that way. I like to do it the other way, but it literally says if you interact with her in any way, she casts Horrifying Visage, and then you go into initiative. Well, huh. I did interact, interact with, her. with her. Fucking save! She just kissed her. That's a secret way to make her not attack. Nah. There you go. Just oh, I was at 19s tonight. 19, 19, 19. Only 19, but my mind is old. <laughs> God damn, God damn it. it. So everything is Hamilton. Ma Magpie, right. Blackjack, and Kristoff. You what? are frightened. Okay. Ah uh, shit. Doesn't matter. That just means I can't move closer, right? Uh, I've seen worse the, the, the behind end of a pig's ass. Uh disadvantages and stuff because it says disadvantage ability checks and attack rolls for the source of Blackjack. Black Did Blackjack make it? By. <laughs> Blackjack, you age 30 years. What? God, God damn, damn that is. is <laughs> oh, <shit>. The horrifying <laughs> look on the white lady has just sent such a shrill down your spine. Your soul is just sucked for a moment you you steal yourself and remain partially but Say you're 30. one you're 30 yes stupid <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> once your once full brown beard is now gray and crackly oh, and wispy 54 years old it's still fine i'm fine you've got the salt and pepper look then how about that i'm I can't even retire yet, okay? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me wait, wait, in water deep. I need a, I need a rolling. If you have an encounter with a ghost and you age to seventy five, do you get to retire? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or do they pay for the credit restoration so you don't get your retirement check? You're pretty far well, from if you're water in the US, deep. you don't get it paid for. <laughs> There's no retiring in Icewind Dale, There's just dying. Yeah. Well, you're 30 years closer to retirement, then. <laughs> I'm also 30 years closer to get out of this fucking hellhole. But yes, you've got the salt. Instead of, instead of that nice uh, brown, upbeat spunk that you used to have, you've now got aches in your joints and your beard and mutton chops. I'm going to Photoshop that picture. <laughs> gray and flecked with black. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. And it, it'll start with you. <laughs> thanks, thanks for ruining my childish fervor, you fucking son of a bitch. All right. I don't feel like playing my guitar anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my fingers aren't what they used to be. All right. much as the game. I'm fucking. I'm so pissed off, and I'm also scared. So, anyway, um. Here's one Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> oh man fucking you took all my moves away from me too i fucking hate you right now <laughs> all right so i asked if you were staying at the inn and you said no okay i, I, I didn't need to stay at the inn i was fine 
We can save the end after, I promise. Alright, so... So... I'm going to... Is Frightened... Hold on. Uh, creatures disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of the fears... Okay. Alright, that's not so bad, so... I'm going to... True Strike. I'm going to point my finger at that bitch. And... Um, so that should wash on my next turn, right? Yes. If, right? Yep. Yep, yep. It would cancel right, out cool. the disadvantage. That's what I wanted to hear. And then... Uh, for my bonus auction, bonus uh, my bonus auction, I would like to do some st fucking dope shit. Um, what else, <laughs> I don't really know. Um, oh, here it is. It's just open. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to do bleh, and Aww. give everybody five bonus. Temporary hit points, you can nice move wherever you want. I am going to move. Is this up or downstairs? Which one? The right beside me. This one? Yeah. That's down. That's down, alright. I'm going to uh wait, I can't oh no yeah, I keep thinking it's um Um the one where I can't move closer to them. I can't remember what that one is. Frightened, but, you can't willingly move closer, but you're kind of sidestepping. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Sidestepping. Um, and I'll end my turn there. On to the real magpie. Magpie, though scared, is going to squint his eyes. Gunning action aim and shoot normally. <laughs> and he's going to completely miss and hit Blackjack in the face. <laughs> please no, please. Black. It does pierce into the Shardwin figurehead behind you and cracks it a bit, sends just a spidering crack up its body. That's not good. I didn't like that. Okay. Had him interaction put on sunglasses. That's it. <laughs> yeah! Piggy. Here comes the pigs. <laughs> God, I just hate playing this game. Please, go, go ahead. <laughs> so, Piggy, how do you want to do it? Because you're going to have eight of them, right? I'm not yeah. saying with the ghost, but do you want to just have one token that represents eight, or do you want to put all eight out there? No, they're we'll... all eight. Okay. They're going to surround her. I'm fine with that. But I'm oh, not. My God. I'm not... <laughs> you got to drag like them out there. <laughs> yeah, she like makes like a whistle, and you see like eight pigs just come through the doorway. <laughs> so I think so. We? You have to ask, but I think so. This, this is amazing. This is how a druid should be. <laughs> Fear the <laughs> pigs. Here, here's eight pigs. Is this a swine flu? <laughs> Man, I just fucking. I'm so glad I'm not playing the game anymore. No <laughs> 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 longer have to. Yep. The four pig box. And then. Spirit totem on him. <laughs> That'll probably actually catch me in there. They Wait. get an additional 10 HP for all of them. If it uses its horrifying visage and it ages the pigs like 20 years, do the pigs die? I guess. <laughs> well, wouldn't wouldn't they, they become, become aged bacon, bacon? Which is, which is so <laughs> worth it. Pigs live 15 to 20 years. Ooh. And then they're all going to attack and charge at her. <laughs> they are free I feel to bad do for so. the ghost. Oh. They all have flanking, right? What's the, uh, oh shit, I gotta change that. Uh, what's the aura on spiritual, or, uh, the, your totem? 30 feet. Oh. Okay. Uh, and da -da. if they're flanking, they get advantage. If we have flanking rules, at least. 
I do. Because I'm cool. No, you rude that because you don't <laughs> sing game balance. <laughs> uh, so that's 30 feet for the totem. Can you guys see that? The totem? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I can, my good friend. Uh, and Ten holy HP. Moses. Where is it? It's a spiritual totem? I do not yep. know. I can refresh again. Yeah, a spirit totem. And... This is 30 feet perfect. radius, so it hits everybody. Oh, I'm sorry, do that again. I'm sorry, I deleted the wrong thing. Yes, yeah, it hits everybody. Yeah. So, so everybody gets 10, 10 HP. Yeah, 10 HP. Temporary, yeah. yeah. Sick. So, the boars all charging at the ghosty lady. 2, 4, 11, 13, 17, 20, 27 damage. Total. How many hit, actually? Uh, the only thing that didn't was the 7 was the 7. Oh, so, okay, so this Did is seven already... charge attacks on top of that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, okay, seven, so... 76. Yep. yep. And, and she, she has, has to make, make all seven, seven strength, strength saves. saves. Oh, shit, there we go. 30 damage on top of that. Being a ghost, she can't be knocked prone. Ah. But 56 points of damage total... Mm -hmm. To the ghosty lady. Um, the <laughs> hooves and uh, tusks and just constant ramming berates the spirit and she wails out in agony and some of her form starts to dissipate, but not as much as you would expect. And that's all I do. And it'll go Are on you the sure? Board. You can do more if you want. <laughs> I already used uh, up my bonus action. <laughs> so I'm just gonna cast Bull Reliable, Reliable at level, level two. two. There it is. Seven, eleven for eighteen points. Ooh, she had seventeen HP left. Yay! <laughs> you, know you know how I want to do it. I knew it. one's gonna, gonna spike right, right through her head, and she's, and she's gonna attempt, attempt to scream right, right before it hits, and it's gonna go in her mouth and shut her the fuck up. Isn't that 14? <laughs> Chris is bad at math, let him have this. Wait, 7, seven plus 11 is 18. What's the 11? I mean, it's 7 plus 11, though. 4 and 3. Oh, 7, seven plus 7 is 7 plus 7 is 14. <laughs> oh, know. I am very bad at math. <laughs> I am very bad at math. But still, she had 17 HP. 14, so she has 14 damage. I already cleared out the initiative. This is unfair <laughs> ruling. <laughs> I already cleared out the DM initiative. DM versus player mentality. My I'll, uh, kick her in the shins one more time. Yeah, I'll throw a shoe at her. <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm not wearing shoes. You guys are going to win the fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, we could, we could lose it. They could crit. Seven times. Captain, you know what, though? The, the next, next one to go was going to be, be uh, I think, Blackjack, Blackjack at 16. 16? Or no, or no, who had no, 16? Oh, Finn Bovinger had 16, so he wasn't doing shit. But it would have been Kristoff after that at 13, so... <laughs> I think we were gonna win. I think we had that one in the back. I apologize to the YouTube audience for not actually killing that, but I'm gonna fucking take credit on my kill list. It's a kill, yeah. Count on the kill list, for sure. Captain Arogoth is gonna... Why are you... You're ruining the statue! This is... I guess some kind of relic, I guess. I, I don't know, but what are you doing? There's bags in here now. Ghost. There was no ghosts. That's a ghost. Uh, there absolutely <laughs> was a ghost. Can yeah, you I think that's a ghost true. body. <laughs> no. I, yeah, I, woman or man. There no, there's not even ropes that tied her up. They phased out of existence. Can, Can we, we prove, prove that, that there was a ghost, ghost with an arcana, arcana check? check? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I don't. I don't see how. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Trust me on this one, there was a ghost. Take us to the speaker. Well, I was trying to, and then he started shooting the statue. 
Shut up and take us. For her, it's been, yeah, it's, it's been all of 12 hungry. seconds. So you guys were... <laughs> 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 Pigs come out of nowhere. Blackjack gets 30 years older out of nowhere. Blackjack does the Santa Claus thing. That's that's forever, right? I'm just 50 years old now? Yes. If you was an era cockroach, you'd be dead. They only lived to like 40. <laughs> Check. Okay, okay, so yeah, if you could kindly take us to the speaker now that we've solved your ghost problem. And you are met with the loveliest of gentlemen. Oh, you had me going for a second. Hey, uh, guys got any cigarettes? <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what he looks like. He looks like a gas station bum. How is this guy the speaker? Oh, it's because this is the shittiest of all the towns, that's why. The town of thieves, that's why they elected a guy who looks like he deals meth. On the contrary, though. Speaker Danith Whalen is very well respected. Uh, he's a very humble speaker, known for speaking his mind and his forthrightness. Uh, he trusts in the people who he's hired to do the job. He doesn't micromanage, and he listens to the troubles of the people. And in, by all accounts, he is one of the best town speakers. I hope he likes pigs. Oh, oh he just <laughs> looks like he deals math. Okay. okay. <laughs> as long as we can trust him. Ah, whoa, whoa! Pigs! Pigs, where did these come from? Uh, they're part of my entourage. I got a fan club going. They're, they're magic, magic pigs. pigs. Sorry, he's are, literally, are, sorry, he's literally insane. Are, are you selling any of these? Uh, I have a farm if you want to try some of my goods. I, I, will, I will hire you right now. Here, try <laughs> this one. It's my recipe. Oh, that comes from these pigs? And he's just inhaling it. Oh, yes. It's a family recipe. And he'll look up at the rest of you. Wait a second. Wait a second. Are you guys... You know, finish up. He's still got little bits of fried Oreo on his mm -hmm. beard. You're the ones from uh, outside of town, right? The... the Ones that carry Dinavald, they, uh, Trovis, and uh, Granok we're talking about. Yeah, yeah that's, that's probably us. us. The, ones the ones who helped, who helped uh, find their stolen lantern, lantern and... Oh, oh wait, wait, we never, we never actually, actually took the lantern, the lantern back. back. Son, Son of a bitch, bitch we still have that. that. Oh, we should <laughs> probably <laughs> take that back to Karakonik. We do have their lantern, though. We're going to give it back to them. We got Trovis his mead. We got good mead a new speaker. What else, what else did we do? We did, we did yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah, that new speaker. He's uh, his first meeting's actually tonight. Oh, is, oh, is it? it? Can, Can you say, say hi to him for us? His, his name is Pancho, Pancho, and he's our buddy. That's a damn shame what happened to uh, the previous one. Hopefully, this new one fares a bit better. Well, well he, he was, was able, able to take revenge for the old speaker. speaker if that makes you feel any better. Revenge is a dish best served cold, and I've had plenty of cold in my life to have any more. There's not much room for hate. Anyway, if the captain's brought you here, I assume it's something important. So, what do you want to tell me? So, uh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo over, over in the White, White Lady, Lady Inn, Inn told us the story of the White Lady. Lady. I'm, sure I'm sure you've, you've heard, heard it. it. If, if you, you haven't, haven't, let me tell you. And then, and then I tell him. I've heard it, yep. We've got uh, the head of the ship on display. I'm sure you had to have passed by it. Yeah, yeah we, we absolutely, absolutely did. And we are going to come back to that. Because <laughs> that is a huge deal. But what was the name of that lord and lady? Oh, it was uh, Alexander and Charlotte. Alexander and Charlotte what? Lima Ray. Lima Ray. What, what town, town were they from? from? Were, they were they from East Haven? East Haven? Oh yeah, long-standing, long-standing. Alexander was, 
he was uh, like a, like a prince of the seas. Like he he carried himself with such tenacity and and grace that people couldn't help but either fear him or bow down in absolute respect and awe. He brought a lot of goods to this town. A lot of money. So, so did, did they have like an estate or, or lands or something nearby? Oh yeah, their their house is still still within city walls. Well, you know, walls. The city, the city limits. limits. Uh, uh, would, would you, in your, in your capacity, capacity as speaker, uh, be, so be so kind as to grant us entry so that, so that we can investigate, investigate further? Oh, what, uh, what business of theirs is yours? Well, well you see, we heard about the treasure, treasure at the bottom of the lake, and, and if we can plot their course using the documents in their home, we might be able to recover it and, and share the wealth with your fine village. village. He'll begin to rub his eyes. Also, also, while we're, we're out there, there we, we could look, look for your fishermen. Exactly. I'm sure you've heard by now. There's plenty of people that have gone out looking for the treasure, and they never turn up. They never turn up. And now our fishermen are going out there, and our supply is running so low. Pretty soon here, we're going to have to start paying for people to bring us fish. Can you imagine? East Haven. Importing well, fish. You see, Danit, that's why if you let us in there, we can investigate and find the course, and then go out on the frozen lake, find your people, and hopefully find this money for you. I can tell you where exactly where they all go. Oh, that would save us a ton of time. Where do they go, then? Why? The treasure's a myth. It's a legend. It's not real. And what harm is there in verifying that? You, you clearly got, got the, the the figurehead from the ship, so the ship was real. The ship definitely went down, which means that the remains of said ship must be down there. All right. There's one of the larger ice flows that drifts nearby where the the frozen lake meets the unfrozen part. Fishermen drag their boats out there. Most of them just play it safe and fish right off right off the ledge of the ice those like you that want to go after uh, riches or whatever whatever the cause may be treasure it's a they venture further out into one of the larger ice flows big cavern network I see so, do you think it's actually further into the caverns, then? I mean, how did you guys recover the figurehead? You have to know where the ship is itself. The ship existed, and it now lays at, lays at the bottom of the lack. The treasure, I don't think, exists. I see. Well, again, the figurehead, though... We need, we need to, to have, have a conversation, conversation about, about that. What about it? You, you, you know it's made, made of Chardolin, correct? correct? Made of what? Chardolin. I don't know what that is. Oh my, oh my goodness. goodness. It, it is an extremely malleable, valuable, valuable magical, magical material. Great for crafting staves and wands of power, rods of control, etc. By its very nature, it can be influenced by certain types of magics, especially those of the celestial and abyssal varieties. Unfortunately, blackened Chardolin tends to be touched by the evil variety of magic, and the figurehead you have out there happens to be quite dark. I'm wondering, wondering if maybe, in your capacity as speaker, you, you might think, think to get rid of it, so as to not plague your town further with its evil. He'll consider it for a moment. What would the people say? They've come to see it as, as part of the history. Oh, you, you can, can still, still tell them it's part, part of the history. history. Have your, your finest, finest artist come, come and sketch it and build a replica if you would like, but that? 
That, that is, is pure, pure evil. evil. Keeping, Keeping it here will only do harm, harm to your town. town. Captain. And she'll stand up, come through the doors. Sir, I need you to get some of your strongest men. Break this down, chop it up, do what you have to do. Uh, and he'll look back at you for it. How do we get rid of it? Throw it at the bottom of the lake? What? Anywhere, Anywhere no, no one would seek, seek to, to find, find it. it. We'll bury it in the snow then. Uh, can, uh, can you take me to the map of Icewind Dale for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From East Haven. Have your captain actually throw the uh, pieces into the red waters, but tell everyone you've thrown them into Lac Denishir. And that way, even if they do go to look for them, they won't be looking in the right place. He'll look over at the captain and just give her a nod. And she'll once again salute. And now, now Danith, because, because you've helped, helped us and listened to all my requests, us, uh, I, think I think we should seek your fishermen. Try to, try to bring them home safely. Yeah, yeah. Does the party agree? Chris also says, yeah, that's, that's a good, good idea. idea. That's, that's how he sounds. sounds. Because of the mask. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to break first? Your mind? Or your body? <laughs> oh, no, no. No, I didn't, didn't buy it. it. I didn't know the taste of Pepsi until I was already a man. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big man. For you. <laughs> So, Piggy, what do you, what do you think? think? Do you think it's time to look, look for these fishermen? fishermen? We've kind of put this one off long enough. It's been on the back burner for quite a bit. Uh, we're getting paid, that's right. We are, we are getting, getting paid, paid for it. We're, we're gonna, gonna get either a scroll, scroll of fireball, fireball or... What was, what was the, the other, other thing she had? That, uh, sack of fuzzies. Oh, oh sack, sack of fuzzies. fuzzies. Okay. I really I wanted the scroll of fireball, but I also just got a whole last spell book, so if we wanted the scroll or the bag of fuzzies instead, I wouldn't be mad. The bag. Hmm? But let's go. Let's get this quest done. Agreed. Agreed. I, think I think we should, should head to uh, the ferry, ferry and cool. double check that it's still empty. empty. If, if it is, is we can spend the night there and then start, start our search in the morning. morning. Well, if I can interject a moment. Yes. Myself, I'm not too concerned with our fishermen. They made their choice to go seek out treasure. The proper fishermen are out there hunting fish. What concerns me more is this substance. How do you know so much about it? Well, we encountered some uh, originally in Caer Dineval, and that is where we learned of its properties. Unfortunately, we have yet to find any of the untainted variety. And, and I'm, I'm sure, sure the uh, anointed, anointed celestial variety is even more rare, rare but every bit we've encountered, encountered so far has been this blackened, terrible, terrible version. So the rumors are true then? Rumors? Dark dwarves taking advantage of the lack of sun. I. Unfortunately, yes, can confirm to you the Dark Dwarves are in your towns. Uh, bit of good news. Zardok's son Blight, the leader of them, uh, we killed his sons! So, actually saying that out loud, it might not be good news. He may be very angry with us. <laughs> That's, uh... But we did kill his sons in a few of his scouting parties. It's very... Very troubling. Very troubling. Do you want, you want to, know to know the, the most, most troubling, troubling part? 
Hmm. Now, now one of his sons, sons was here in your, your town. town. Where? When? The, 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 the fairy, fairy we were, were going, going to use as lodgings, lodgings for the evening, we routed, routed him a few, few days ago, ago almost a ten day now. And where was Scython? He owns the docks. He should have been watching over them. I have no idea who this Scython character is. We didn't even speak to him. We literally just followed footprints to the ferry. If what you tell me about this substance is true, which apparently I've got no choice but to believe you, and I've got no reason not to believe you, the Dark Dwarves are very, very concerning. I'll tell you what. Look for the fishermen if you want to. Treasure hunters, I get it. I get it. But if treasure is what you want, I will draft a letter right here, right now, to the rest of the ten towns. I'm asking for 2,000 gold to deal with the Dark Dwarves' threat. If they've plagued Kaer Koenig, Kaer Daneval, and now my town, who knows where their reach will go. Yes. 2,000 gold. Yes. yes. Just a good yes. idea. Are you, are you the Jerry simulation? <laughs> no. I can't promise this. I can promise that I will ask for it. As town speaker of one of the top large four, big four, I guess you can call it, my name four? does carry some weight. But I can't promise that every ten town will be as receptive to the news as I've been. I can't tell you that couriers have spread word of your exploits among the towns. You're starting to grant, get a reputation. So far it's been good. So I hope that'll, that'll mean they're willing to pitch in a little bit. But I'll tell you this. If a threat of Dark Dwarves looms over us. You best get used to the horrors of the tundra and steal yourselves. Learn the land. Learn how to survive out there. Alright. So, so you're asking, asking us to go after the Dark Dwarves. Dwarves. Stop, Stop them from corrupting, corrupting the towns, which... which Kind of was on our list anyway, but now that it's an official quest, yeah. We do really like funds. Yeah, fundage is most necessary for the retaking of a kingdom. I just like traveling with my friends. That need not worry about that. Yeah. Um, so, conversing with the group, if we want to move on Sunblight now, from, from East, East Haven, Haven, we could pretty much go straight, straight south. south. But, but we, we also have that uh, fallen star, star that we could check out. Like yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, yep. I do want to find the aliens. I think, so, yeah, we should we should hit the falling star on the way to Sunblight, in my opinion. like That's that's a cool side quest I definitely wanted to get to. If, if that's, that's our plan, plan of attack, attack then, then, I'd say we need to head to Dugan's Hole. Check, check that out real quick. quick. Not necessarily do anything there. Yeah, you need to go really deep into Dugan's Hole. <laughs> you very deep in Dugan's Hole okay, guys, later. come on. But, uh, Wait, but isn't Dugan's Hole kind of like off? So, it's right. But, but once, once we go to Dugan's, Dugan's Hole, we can follow the coast, cross, cross that, that river, river, and then go in between, in between these two forests up to that's not around a... the area where the star fell. So this whole area is gonna just be that's a frozen like, river, right? Like this whole area is. Yep. I mean, it's, a, it's a lot of where it's ice, ice is frozen. frozen river. Yep, it's a lot of mounds, snowdrifts. Not necessarily. I mean, the uh, the grayer stuff is mountains, but the hills here are just like, large snowdrifts. 
This is a hill. Or it could be a sleeping ancient white dragon that's been covered in snow. God, I really hope not, but sure, it could be one of those. Probably not. Oh, uh, I remember. I had a question for you. Uh, would we have now seen that rock and everything fly over? Yes. Okay. So, approximately, how big is the rock in comparison to Aviatoris? Ooh. Um, like, are they roughly the same size? Like, if this. I know rocks are generally the size of dragons or close, but. Essentially, yes. if there's two, two giant, giant flying, flying things, things in the sky, we need to be aware of them at all times. There are two giant, gargantuan-sized, white flying objects. One's, one's a dragon, dragon, one's a rock. Cool. cool. That's, That's uh, very, very troubling. troubling. It sounds like you're describing uh, the 2020 presidential election, but it's okay. <laughs> Two very old, very large, very white things. <laughs> One's a rock that won't move and... well. One's a dragon that just breathes fire all day. You decide which Actually one Actually ice, because it's a white dragon. Hold on now. Wait a minute. Play that universe. So is the plan of attack then to stay the night here and then go to Dugan's Hole? And then from there we can head to the Starfall and into Sunblight? What was yep. in Dugan's Hole? I just can't remember why we were going there. We don't know. We haven't been there. No one's directed us to go there. It's okay. just the southernmost ten town. Cool. I do want to yeah. like have a nice. I would. I do want to poke my head in. So. Yeah. No, I'm not against that. I just. I couldn't remember if I missed something. Absolutely. But like, uh, if the speaker's on the road, I will definitely introduce myself to the speaker. Yeah. Just a peep. <laughs> speaker. <laughs> also, we can stop into Good Me and high five Poncho and then leave. <laughs> He's still crazy? Alright, guy. High five. five. Maybe he'll give us some free mead. Oh, it's good mead. Well, that's where we'll call it for the evening. Thanks, no, everybody, for playing. Hours. I would I would really love to. But I know a few of us have to get to bed. Yeah. yeah. Got work in the morning. I am <sighs> not one of those people. Yeah. Gotta be yeah, up I gotta there. Even later for you than us, dude. How are you still awake? Who? Who? Isn't it like 1 a.m. for the Brit? Uh, Is it? 2 a.m. Wow. Goodness. Yeah. So I haven't seen 2 a.m. in many years, sir. It's enough. In case enough. anybody's interested, it's uh. Wait, really? 2 a.m. Damn. That's yeah, like you're just getting started. Mm -hmm. It's like a seven-hour time difference. That's crazy. Well, thanks for playing. Thanks for tuning in. Those on the internet, appreciate your support. And you guys, as players, you're just the best. I hope you guys had fun. Five hours. Okay. And we'll see you next week. On hey. the next episode of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs>